Her is amazing. Let's bring her up. Uh, this person, she has worked on a viral video that has 22 million hits because they shredded a Volkswagen. This person is one of the top Toastmasters in the world. This person helped quadruple the attendance to a conference. This person is also one of the top TED coaches for people around the world, including one of her favorite uh, clients, Nike in the house. Why don't you give it up? Put your hands in the air for one. Kathy runs with tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. All right. I'm going to stop sharing myself. I don't want to see my face. I want to see all of you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here with me today. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to talk to you about two things, really. Just two things, because I... I'm a, I, I became an accidental TED coach. And the reason I say accidental is I started my career, um, I started my career in marketing. And as John said, I started this crazy viral video campaign back in 2005, right before YouTube launched. YouTube had, wasn't on the scene yet. And I, I convinced the CEO of the company that I was working for, I was a director of marketing and I convinced the CEO, I was like, I think we should put videos of our industrial shredders online. The CEO was like, are you kidding? Like how many people can buy a half a million dollar shredder? Like, that's ridiculous. Don't do that. That's stupid. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. I feel like the internet's kind of a powerful thing. You know, back in 2005, um, CEO guy, not really feeling the whole, you know, internet thing. Uh, but I convinced him early 2005, Hey, let's put these videos up online. We do. And People go freaking nuts, like nuts. Uh, I get a call one day, I'm sitting there, I get a call, I pick up the phone and the guy on the other line is like, hi, this is uh, Mike from the David Letterman show. And I was like, no, this is not Mike from the David Letterman show. My sister tries to prank me all the time, but, but nice try. I hang up on the guy, literally hung up on him, not even kidding. Um, then I get an email from Mike at the David Letterman show. And I was like, oh, shoot, that actually was Mike from the David Letterman show. And John, thanks for putting the, I don't know which video you put in there. Is it the, is it the VW? Oh, yeah, the hippie VW with your hippie VW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were shredding a bunch of, we were shredding a bunch of materials. And we did that, you know, that's what we did in our work. Um, we just highlighted an, an idea of something that we did that was genuine to us. So kind of going back to what Robert said in the last session, we were just being us. And I was like, let's just highlight. We, we shred really cool things. We shredded torpedoes, mattresses, soccer balls were really fun because they would pop out of the shredder and make really loud noises. Um, and all of that, just highlighting, just making this decision to put it online um, we went from being a $17 million company. We were at that time, we were around for 22, 23 years. And we had this crazy stretch goal to get to 25. And, um, in 18 months later, after we launched this campaign, we were a $42 million company, which was insane. Like those 18 months were a ride. We were on the David Letterman show, CNN, CNBC, so what I wanted, why I wanted to share a little bit of that idea, and um, you can check out that link and so many others, um, is that all we did was took something genuine that we were doing. We took an idea and we put it to the world in a really cool way. And I realized when I became a TED coach, when one of my clients got asked to give a TED talk, I was like, wait, well, how am I like, how am I a TED coach right now? What, what the hell happened here? And I was like, oh, all a TED talk is, is a mini marketing campaign for an idea. That's all that it really is. So today I'm really going to talk about ideas. And so um, I'm going to share my screen again real quick. I got a couple of things I want to share with you, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about how ideas, do, 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 get there. you know, hearing, I'm going to talk about how ideas kind of rule the world. And, um, yeah, so I'm a TED coach. This is what I do now. I go all over the world. Um, I was in Slovenia then uh, doing a big conference where I was coaching a bunch of people. And I coached everybody from a rap star to a 91-year-old to a World War II vet. So, and everybody in between, CEOs, you know, people giving TED Talks all over the world. And the worst thing, no matter what somebody's talking about, the worst thing that you can be is boring. Like, I don't care what you're talking about. Be brilliant. Show a good idea and be brilliant. Don't be boring. Being boring feels like a kick in the ass. Like, have you ever been watched a presentation? You're like, oh my God, just kick me off the freaking balcony. Um, Cause I would rather do that than to be where I am right now. 
Um, and at the end of the day, I kind of realized, because I used to believe there were boring topics, but I realized there's no boring topics. There's only boring speakers. So if you can't take your topic, whatever it is, and make it amazing, then maybe you're a boring speaker. And we can fix that. We can fix that. Um, so we're going to talk about ideas. That's, that's what we're going to talk about. An idea sells. Information tells an idea sells. Um, and today, I just want you to walk away with two things. I want you to walk away thinking that I heard ideas today that made an impact and I saw how engagement makes a connection. Ideas can make an impact and engagement can make a connection. So um, we're gonna play a little game really quick right now. We are going to play the emotions game. I, I do improv as well. I love improv. Um, if you've never done it before, it's so uh, fun to do. The yes and is amazing. Um, but one of the things that uh, I love to do is and you do this when you speak or when you talk or you're, you present, your emotions give so much, especially in this space of like, you can't see me or feel my energy. Hi. Your, your face shows up. I'm Donna. Um, I, somebody's not on mute, Donna. <laughs> hi, hi, Donna. Um, so we're gonna play a quick game and we are gonna show how our faces control our emotions. Have you ever sat in a meeting and saw somebody, this happens to me, I look at my own face and if I start to let it go, my face starts to like, I call it melting face. You're like, your face starts melting and you're like, oh my God, do I look like that? So we're gonna go through a couple of motions. Use your face only and show me what happy looks like. What's happy look like? So you're listening to somebody talk and you're like, yeah, and I love yours. John was like, ah, John, I love John because I can see the front of John and I can see behind John. Tim Hammond's awesome. Donna, I love it. You got that. You've got this here. Ruth, you're really smiley. Robert, you're kind of bobbing your head. Bridget, I see a, I see a beautiful smile and a head nod. Uh, Rebecca, I see, a, I see a slight smile. I can tell you're happy, right? Now, show me concern. What does concern look like? Mm. 